G'day guys, today I'm going to do a quick video on how to replace a three gang light switch. So I was just ripping this light switch off the wall and I realised that I hadn't done a video yet on how to replace a triple light switch or a three gang light switch. So today we'll be replacing this as an old 200 series of PDL with an XL Life uh, Legrand updated version. This light switch here is a bit buggered. All I've done is pop dots off and rip the screws out, just have a peek in behind it. Um, before you rip these off the wall, you want to make sure the circuit's dead. So the best way to do that, whip all the lights on and pull lighting breakers out until they die. Just like that. And always double check. I've got a wee volt stick here. This one is a no brander but this one's actually really good. I'll do a video soon comparing the Fluke, the Milwaukee ones and these ones. Seriously, uh, the new Milwaukee ones aren't great at all and I would not recommend them but I'll explain why in a future video. Obviously, it's not picking up any voltage. If it does, it's just voltage from moving it around but everything's dead there. Always test that these work on a live outlet. So what I've done, gone over to where the other nice loader is and made sure that this is working. So always double check to ensure. If you really want to, test with your multimeter. All right, the next thing is on the back of it, you can locate the three wires that go to each one of these lights. And what I'm gonna do is label them one, two, three. So my number one, because I'm going from a sideways switch thing to a vertical switch outlet I'm going to have on top I'm going to have my number one, two and three. So I'll grab a sharpie and I'll just put a band one, two, two bands and then three bands on that one. Easy way to label them. Sweet, so I've got a sharpie here. One, two, three. One, two, and one. And then the other two that are twisted together in the back here. Yeah, I'll give you a close up. So if you can see those two that I haven't labelled, these ones in the back here. These two that are twisted together are the feeds. So I'm going to have to get another piece of red um, and just twist it on and loop it between the C terminals and the backs of the new light switches. Rightio, so next part. Rip this straight off the wall. Cool. So I got my one, two, three. Sweet. Now as you can see, that earth wasn't connected properly to the rest of the earths and they're not even in a connector or anything. So I'll be re-terminating those. And it looks here like one of the neutrals have come out. So always when you rip these off, see that? Make sure that you re-terminate everything behind them. These terminations here are pretty crap. So off camera, I'm gonna rip this flush box out, this middle one and behind the light switch. Now these flush boxes are what mounts the light switch to the wall. So I'll be just throwing a new plastic one of these in there. Alrighty, so off camera, as I said, I was throwing a plastic flush box in just because they're a bit easier to work with. Now my cables are here. This cable here, I found a whole lot of excess length in behind the flush box. So I peel the cores back and re-terminate them close to the connection. Now, the best way to measure length out of a flush box is to do a hand and a thumb width. So out like that, snip it right there. Whip the insulation off. Now this one was number two, this cable. Just because I know my feed's still there and I've got three and one. Strip these off. Right, so I re-terminate this end by folding it in half because it's a one mil. It's a solid core cable. And then squeezing it just like that. Earth. We'll twist onto these earths here. 
going to strip a bit more length off them. Now I'm not a big fan of bloody what what the old Sparkies used to do was soldering, stripping them back and soldering them together. But I'll just have to work with it because if I cut that off, then I've got no earths left to work with. I will cut it back, however, just a touch. Cut her off so I can fit a connector over it. Twist her up a wee bit more. Now that connector's going to cover all of the bare copper sticking out the cables. Apologies if you can't see it, the lighting is a wee bit terrible at the moment because obviously the lights had to be powered off and it is night time. Grab one of these connectors, whip it open, smash it on the uh, earth cables. Now, there's a wallpaper wall, so just take it easy around the wallpaper corners. You don't want to rip it beyond the outline of the light switch, otherwise it'll look terrible. Right, next one is the neutrals. We'll do the same again. Terminate this one up with the other black cables. What I'm doing here is just twist them all up. If you do have room to work with, I'd suggest cutting this whole thing off and starting again. But that there works a treat. So I'll throw another connector on this, that's that taken care of. Now what I said earlier is I'm going to need a bit more length to do a couple of loops off the feeds so I can get between each of the three switches. Now because I had excess length on that piece of one mil here, I can just use this scrap piece, strip the end off, fold her over, this will make the far end, make a loop. Right now being careful not to cut the cable, spin it round in the pliers, gripping it really softly and stripping it, fold it in half, and then cut it to length for the final one. Now this here is just going to twist on with your original feeds. I suggest to re-terminate them. These ones here are okay. Because they are, these one mils are prone to snapping. No, right. So, I'll strip these off. And re-terminate by twisting them all together. Right, next part. Smash this out the uh, wrapping. So loosen off these terminals, the ones in the C's. Now these three loops we've made of the feed, these are going to go in the C, in the middle terminal, on each switch. Top one in first. Don't over tighten it, but do it nice and tight. Give it the pull test, make sure none of the cores are going to break out. Next one down. Make sure that the screw's gripping onto the copper and there's no copper showing above this plastic edge here. Give it the pull test again, make sure it's not coming out. Right, so I said number one was going to be on top, number three on the bottom. So this here is number three, so that's going on the bottom. These switch wires, they're going to go into the number one of each switch. So this cable that's labelled number three will be going the bottom switch. So it'll be going into the number one terminal, which is on these Legrand ones, the bottom terminal. On your PDL 600 series and a lot of other brands, they're actually the top terminal. So be aware of what one's number one. They are labelled on the plastic on the back of them. Otherwise, if you screw it into number two, You'll soon find out that when your switch is turned off, the light's actually turned on. The old pull test on every one. Just make sure nothing's coming out. These 1mm cables do have a good tendency to snap, as I said before. So really, really make sure you do the pull test. 
and if any of them are loose tighten them up slightly if you over tighten them they'll snap pull it out re-terminate it and try again don't leave it loose pull test she's good smash this back on the wall and we'll go and re-liven the circuit also when you're throwing these back on the wall again watch those one mil cores if you do put them on slight angles they can snap so just be careful pushing it back into the wall always get these connectors right down the back so you can fit it in nicely once you screw it back on the wall grab your level out and make sure she's level Again, don't over tighten these because it can dig into the paint as long as it's not going to move throw the cover plate on we'll go throw the fuse back in and give her a test radio turn my torch off top one yep second one yep third one yeah once you've finished get the vacuum out Give her a bit of a tidy up, keep the missus happy. Cheers for watching.